it's up in the yeah. air for you guys. And not just because of the things that the draft, but because yeah. of everything else. Let's talk yeah. about the off season because y'all were y'all were making moves far yeah. before the draft even happened, man. So, I mean, how do you feel about Atlanta, uh, about Atlanta's off season thus far? Honestly, I preferred the off season more than I preferred the draft. Like, don't get me wrong. Like going back to Bijan Robinson, I really liked him. But what we did in the off season is we really addressed some holes, and that's where I really liked it. Signing Caden Ellis, David Onimata, you know, and Jesse Bates and Calias Campbell, like huge names, huge yeah. names, especially for the defensive line. Calias Campbell being paired with Grady Jarrett is really going to take some pressure off. <laughs> yes. So you know. Like our defensive line has some, you know, they have some bulk now at this point, right? So I really like that. You know, Caden Ellis and David Onimata, you know, paired with, uh, I believe, our assistant coach. I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now, but coming from New Orleans Saints, they're familiar with him, right? Like yeah. he he knows how they work. So I, I'm really thinking that he's going to gel already without those guys. He's bringing in his boys. So I think that's going to help them. You know, arguably one of the biggest signings in the offseason, you know, Jesse Bates as a safety. You know, we had issues where we got torched from these long throws, right? So having yeah. Jesse Bates, who's proven himself in that position, I think that's going to be huge, huge for yeah. sure. So, you know, our defensive line is looking a lot better. Um, you know, the signing of Johnny Smith, I, to me, I don't, I didn't really like it. In my opinion, I think considering you know we really haven't got the chance to explore what Kyle Pitts can do, you know, considerably yeah. him not having a quarterback that can throw, you know, and I think it's it's untouched talent at this point. Yeah. Oh, so bringing in Jonu Smith, I get it. You want to add depth to the tight end group, but at the same time, what are you saying about your, you know, the number fourth mm. overall pick, you know, Kyle right. Pitts, right? Do you not trust right. him? Are you trying to challenge him? Are you trying to let a fire under him? I'm not yeah. entirely sure how that works. So, and then Matt, Matt Collins, a wide receiver, he was good in Vegas too. So we need wide receivers. You know, especially with us signing Drake London, we didn't really have a 1B. So not totally shocking that we went that way. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, Taylor Heineke, which I think was a great signing too. Yeah. You know, Desmond Ritter, there's been a lot of uncertainty with him, regardless of if we haven't seen him for a full season, we don't know what he can do. In the locker room, people are saying he's a natural born leader, which I think is awesome to see. So, you know, him being young, I, I don't see him being any worse than Marcus Mariota, in my opinion. You know, he's he's already been shown to be mobile. So, you know, what he did in Cincinnati, I think, was huge. He uh, definitely connected with his wide receivers a lot of the time, and he wasn't scared to throw the ball. So I just hope that translates this season. So, And then if not, we do have Taylor Heineke, who's been in the league for a while. So if it doesn't work out, it's not like we're completely, you know, out of it yet, right? So, yeah. And, and look, Taylor. Look, we I, I've talked to you firsthand about how Taylor is and how he makes me pull the little bit of hair that I have out of my head at times. Yep. Um, but he'll give you seven. He'll give you about seven to eight wins. He's done it for us the last couple of years, and he's a gamer. He's one of those that you want him to show up, and the guys seem to gravitate towards him. So I do like that because I do think that lights a fire in that quarterback room because yep. Taylor can get the job done. And with you guys right now, with that running game, with those the three headed monster, and and the weapons at wide receiver, you just might need that somebody to Are get we it talking done. Three though, or we're talking four? Like that's the thing. Are we talking three or four? Because right now, if you look at it, we got Drake London, we got yeah. Tyler Algier, we still got Cordero Patterson, right? right? We got Drake London, Kyle Pitts, right? I'm not sure. I probably said one of them twice, but regardless, you know our we're maybe like one another solid wide receiver away. I agree from being absolutely unstoppable and D D hop is available. Yeah. I don't think we're going to go that route. <laughs> yeah, I think for I the amount that we'd have to sign him for once he does, if yeah. he does want to stay on the team, have to is, give up. it's going to hurt a little bit. I already think we kind of overpaid on some players in the off season. Mm -hmm. considering the amount of cap we had, but I will say, I really like the direction that the Falcons did go in the off season. You know, there, there's two ways you can go when you're going through a retool or a rebuild, essentially. And this is the way I view it. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Sean. But the way I look at it is either you sign a quarterback and you build around them, or you build mm -hmm. the team and then plug in a quarterback. And preferably, exactly. I yeah. like it the second way. And that's the way that yeah. the Falcons went. Because they have a lot of pieces right now that are going to be on the team for a while. We have a very young team. And the thing is, is if Desmond Ritter doesn't work out, it's literally just going to take a quarterback and that's exactly. it. Exactly. 
Yep. No, you're exactly right. And there's a lot of teams that are in that situation. You yep. look at Washington with us, Pittsburgh with a young quarterback. You got teams that are just like us that are that we're we're not building. We can your quarterback can get it done, but we're yep. building around him. Absolutely. And we're putting pieces in. That's why I think the John U. Smith move is going to help Pitts because he's going to have that veteran leadership that's been in he uh been in New England, so he's yep. been around Belichick, been around greats, and he's been around the league, so he could potentially come in here. And maybe he's the you know, just like what Jacoby Brissett is for Sam Howell, maybe he is for Kyle Pitts that that fire that tells him the little bits of things. This is why you're maybe you're not uh separating. Maybe you know, this is how you make the quarterback that might not be the best, you make him look better. You know what I mean? I, so, I agree. I, I think the tough part, and I just I don't want to go and you know kick down a broken horse as they say right but i i don't see i don't think we've seen his talent it's really tough like we saw his first year with a depleted matt ryan right yeah, matt yeah. ryan was at the end of his tenure in the falcons and don't get me wrong i'm not trying to take anything away from matt ryan he had unbelievable passing yards but towards the last couple of years especially after that super bowl lump that we lost right he wasn't the same that's just the reality yeah, of it right so he was on the decline. And then we had Marcus Mariota for his second year yeah. where Marcus Mariota had one of the worst, pa like the worst passer ratings in the NFL yeah. last season. Right. He was great mobile. Don't get me wrong. There was a couple throws, but for the most part, he didn't throw the ball. He yeah, handed it off. Yeah. So, you know what, to, in my opinion, I agree with you. I don't think having that veteran, you know, that veteranship would hurt per se, but I'd almost want to see what he's going to do. With just having a younger quarterback, and right. seeing him be able to connect with those catches because it wasn't like a scenario where he dropped catches, right? Right, even looking at Drake London when he did throw the ball to Drake London, right? He had those catches, like Drake London still made those touchdowns. Yeah. He was one of the few players that you know, uh, Marcus Mariota did throw to, but I just didn't see a lot of targets with Kyle Smith. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that there is a change. I'm hoping that maybe that is what needs to happen is John U. Smith needs to come in and kind of light the fire in Kyle Pitts, right? To be like, hey man, listen, this is your third year, like better bust out because if not, then they're going to look at trading you. Right. Like no, but it's tough. I, uh, I don't know how to feel about him. I still have faith. I think he, you know, he was given that name as a, for a reason, right. Being a unicorn and, you know, he did very well for the Florida yeah. Gators. So I just, I'm not giving up on him yet. Yeah, no. And, and look, he, 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 I, I, I hate to talk about, him and his lack of production because we know it's directly it's the quarterback yep. it's always been he's or had to do it's or, right. probably too that and i'm glad you said that because i also think he is somebody that is he's a kelsey or he has the potential to be a kelsey Could or george it. kittle but you gotta put the offense around him you gotta force feed him the ball especially before this year when you didn't have much else outside of just yep. pits in london you know you gotta force feed him get him wow. get him the touches he needs I'll be honest with you. I think that Terry Fontenelle is the right GM. I think right. he needs to stay where he's at. I think he's doing unbelievable moves. I do not think that Arthur Smith is the right coach in Atlanta. I think yeah, for I was ask. Yep. and I think for what Atlanta is doing and the identity that they want to become, I think they need to move away from Arthur Smith. You know, Arthur Smith had unbelievable weapons in Tennessee. He had a complete team, and I'm you know. All things considered, they went to the playoffs a lot. They had contention, but they never won that Super Bowl, right? They couldn't get over that hump. And the thing is, is, you know, us even getting Bajon Robinson, like we're not talking about the same caliber as of right now as Derrick Henry, right? right. Derrick right. Henry, like, was the top running back for years now. Yeah, years. Yeah. You know, you had A.J. Brown, right? A.J. Brown was there too. And then yeah. I can't remember the other um, wide receivers that were on – Tennessee, but regardless, they I know they had an unstoppable defensive line. Their offensive line was also like above like mid class as well. So realistically, you know, what was it, right? You just you handing you handing the ball off from Ryan Tannehill to Derrick Henry, you think that's gonna do it? No, yeah. it, it's not. And the thing is, is I think he's keeping that mentality that he had in Tennessee, thinking that it's gonna work here, and it's not like it's not. No. That's not who we've been. We've been the dirty birds. You know, we're we're known for throwing those deep balls. We're known yeah. for having like a decent running game, but not like the best running game, you know? And yeah. that's the thing is if you're not fitting to that scheme, like don't keep him longer than you need to keep him. Yeah. Yes, exactly what Ben's saying. I think we're on the same page. That's exactly it. Yeah.
Now, he did. This is very interesting. He said it works both ways, though. Kyle Pitts needs to demand the ball more as well. I agree because he is that type of player. And, and you know, I'm not saying go T.O. and, you know, all these, you know, bougie receivers. Give me the ball. But he does need to open his mouth and be like, look. Give me the ball or give me a quarterback or give me a coach. Give yeah. me something because with, it's just wasted talent. He's so good. Absolutely. Like, I uh, I couldn't agree more. You know, it could. It, there's a fine line between being cocky and, you know, being heard, right? Like, you know, you can go in there with confidence. That doesn't necessarily mean you're cocky. It just means, you know, you're going in there. You're trying to prove something, right? You're, you you right. want to know that you care for the game. You're in it, right? You right. want what's best for the team. You, you want to sh- like show your talent, right? We're not talking about like an Antonio Brown situation here, where he's going right. out saying, I'm, "I'm the best," you know, screw everybody else, right? Right. right. Like, <laughs> take, take my seat, off, right? Rip my jersey off. I don't care. <laughs> like, I got these rings to show yeah. for. It doesn't matter. Right. Let's go. It doesn't matter. No, it's not yeah. that. No. But you know, your voice isn't gonna be heard unless you sing, right? It, right? Speak yep. up. Absolutely. I, that's, that's a very accurate comment actually from Ben. And it's, it is funny. I mean, it, to that point, I was watching one of those, you know, uh, race across Alaska, race across America, yeah. those like survival shows. And one of the guys on there was saying, he said, it's not that we're cocky. It's that we prepare for this in our entire lives. Pitts has been that guy yeah. through high school to college in, at Florida. Yeah. Let him be that guy here. He's ready for it. Give him that opportunity. So oh, we'll definitely see. We yep. will definitely see. Uh, thank you for sharing. I think that's uh, is that Scott Thaler here. No, nice. <laughs> yes, yeah, Scott Thaler. Yeah. What is going on, guys? What is going on?